Okay, everybody, it's just about time to get started. I hope y'all are going to bear with me today. I have done several things, as you've seen, um, using my Cameo, but I've not yet used my Cricut. So I'm being awfully brave to set it up and just try it right here with people looking and me being live and not able to yeah, there I am, <laughs> and not able to uh, delete it out. The other bad thing, if you go to watch this back, or if anybody else comes later and they want to watch it, um, because we start that, I started the video or the live part so much earlier, underneath the um, video, I'll say what minute to start at in case you want to skip by all this waiting of 15 minutes stuff. So... Okay, cool. Thanks, Carmen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I'm a little bit nervous about this, but I think it's going to go okay. I don't think I'll have a problem, but you never know. You've been on wild goose chases with me before. So anyway, I'll wait just a couple seconds since it's just now 1.30. Make sure I have all my stuff in order. I'm going to use the silhouette first because that's the one I'm comfortable with because I've already used it, but I do have the Cricut set up right down here and I'm ready to put the um, quill in it. I'm going to use the thicker quill in, and I could probably make this better for you, your view. Mm -hmm. ah, it's good the way it is. Okay, so I'm going to use the thicker one with, with for the um, cricket and remember well I'll show you down here let's see I think I forgot Okay, so typically that's not working properly. So just go back to this. And so you're just gonna have to be able to see it on my little teeny tiny screen right here because I don't seem to be able to do it the other way since I also have the um, since I also have my iPhone hooked up, I think that's messing it up a little bit for what you see right here. And I just dropped something. Hang on, be right back. Okay. So as I said, I'm going to do the silhouette first, the cameo. And I actually already have this thing heated up over, heating up over there. So what this is, is you get several different adapters. I think I mentioned that yesterday. You get four different adapters. And the one that you use for Cricut has a C on it. And I'm going to use the one that is the, um, the C for this. And it's the thickest or the boldest line that's going to be drawn because I don't want to have to pull that one out and change them around. And then I'm going to use the narrowest one, no, the medium one on my Cameo. And as my, as I said, my Cameo is over there warming up, Quill is. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to help or show you how I got started with the design for um, this thing. So let's see. I think y'all see my screen right now so I can get rid of this and this. Okay, so and then over here I had hidden what I have done or what I have. All right, let's scroll back over a little bit. Okay, so here's what I have right now and this is what I'm going to be doing on both of these little pieces for our test or for my sample to show you. So this, the pumpkin is actually something that I got for free online, although, and I can give you the link for that down below. It's not an affiliate link of mine. I just happened to see it online. I grabbed it because my intention today was not to make my own SVG, but to rather grab something quickly that I can use 
and just get started. I did, however, mess with the font. So I'm going to ungroup this for a minute and show you what I did. I hope. Nope, you know what I'm going to have to do is release the compound path. And now I'm going to group the pumpkin back together if I can. Oh, no, I missed. Group. And I'm going to move it over. And of course, I lost a little bit of it, but I'll get that in just a second. I'm going to get the word thankful and try not to get that little piece perfect. Okay. All right. Let me move the pumpkin back, hopefully, to where it belongs. Uh, I better kit control Z for a minute and get right back to where I'm supposed to be. Okay, right back in the beginning here. So what I'm going to do to make it easier on myself is I'm going to go ahead and get the bug tool and scroll in. And what I can do since I wasn't able to just draw a square around this without getting these other things, there is a tool over here, the lasso tool, right underneath your select tool. Looks like a piece of rope. You could just grab on that and then just come over here and start, whoopsie, grab it again, I let go of it and just start drawing around what you want to select. So see how that's just drawing right around there? And if I'm really careful, I can go through there and not get the other parts and just get the stuff that I want lasso that quickly. And there we go. And so now that's all lassoed together or selected. And I can right click and say group, but I'm afraid I might mess something up. So another way you can do it is just hit Control G. And that grouped everything together. Control and G, and there's my group. Okay, so this, like I said, I purchased, but I didn't really purchase it because it was free. So I did download it though off the internet. This word right here, the text that I've decided to use is one that I've used before to show you. Let me group this all back together before I mess it up. Put it on and just right click and group or control G for group on a Windows machine. All right. So to get the word thankful, all I did was come over here to the A and type in the word thankful. And that's not the font that I used. So I'm gonna just, I can either highlight that while the green bars are around it, which means it's editable text, or I can just click off of it and click back on. And when those kind of boxes are around, I can still change the font that it is. To change the font, all I have to do is come over here to the right hand side and open the textile panel. Now the font that I used was the one that I had used the other day in our class. And remember I said I liked it much better than Magnolia Sky because it has a nice thicker um, line to it. It's called October Twilight and it's from defont.com so it's free. I'm going to use that. And it comes in just like this and if I wanted to I could make it a little bit fancier or not. But uh, then all I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this and say weld. And you all know why I need to weld it because there's all these little cut pieces. If I scroll in closely, you can see if my machine was cutting this, whether I was using the Cricut or the Cameo, and I need to make sure my heat shield's in there. But anyway, whether I'm using either one of those, what's going to happen is my machine's going to come around here and and it's going to cut up, it's going to keep coming right up through here and cut this part of the H. And then when it starts the A, it's going to come around like this and it's going to cut along this line. So you can see there's a whole lot of lines going to be cut out that you don't want to have cut out. So all you have to do is weld them together. So again, I'm just going to select all of this and say weld. Okay, we all know how to do that. What I wanted to show you today though was if you can see this little card, maybe you can in a moment. I um, made it so that the thankful word wasn't just hollow text with just the outline of it, but rather you see those, um, what are they called? I can't think of the word. You see the little line, the little cross lines. Okay. Diagonal. There we go. Diagonal lines there. I put those in there because I didn't want it to just be an outline of the text, but I wanted to be, uh, have a little fill to it. So to do that, it's really easy. With this thing selected, all you do is come way over here to this little tool way down at the very bottom on my right-hand side. It may be in a different place than yours. 
Are you seeing my crosshairs? Yeah, but it may be in a, a different place than yours, but here it is, the sketch panel. I'm gonna open up the sketch panel and here it is, different line effects that we can use, okay? So watch when I click on one of these. Watch what happens in the word thankful when I click on one of these. Did you see that? It made it, let me scroll in a little closer so you can see. It made it crosshairs, because that's the one, or the um, cross hatched. This is the one I used, but I didn't have them straight across, because you can change the angle of them if you like. There's this one, oops. Okay, that one's for something else. We wouldn't want to be using that one for this probably. But one of these, several, well, there we could actually use this one, but it would be a little bit more involved. So I'm just gonna go with this one again, but before I do it, I'm gonna hit Control Z on my keyboard because I really wanna get back to where I was in the beginning. So I keep hitting Control Z and that undoes it. And what I wanna do is I wanna make a duplicate of this. So I can just hold down Alt on my keyboard and drag out another one, okay? So now I can take this one and I can change its line effect to anything I like. And I'll just change it again to this one. And I can make them further spaced apart by the spacing here or closer together, whatever you like. So not sure what I like yet, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this one on top of it because notice there's no outline for this. And I don't think even if I come up here and change how big the outline is that anything will show up there. Let's see, I think that's just gonna change the line size of these lines within. Yep, you see that? So I'm gonna leave them the way they were, which was at 0.00, .00. enter again. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna change it so that there is no fill. So I come up here to the color area and I'm gonna change it so it's uh, transparent by getting these little crosshatch thing. And there it is. And if I want to, I could even change the line, how thick it is. I'll just leave it like this for now. And then I can just bring these two together like this as best I can, and then grab them both and just come up here to this little bullseye looking thing and say center. So they're centered perfectly. And now this is gonna make a really nice um, foiled text because it's not just gonna be the outline that's drawn, but it's also gonna have some fill in it. And of course I could fill it more if I wanted to, just be careful because this is really big. And so you're tempted to think, oh, those are so far apart, but really, okay, this looks like it's really big, but in reality, this piece right here, well, it is five inches, but still, whoa, I don't have them both. Let's go control Z. I've got to group it first. And if I make it smaller, okay, those are kind of far apart actually. Look, when I get small, they're really, they are kind of far apart. So I think I would probably want to ungroup that and change the spacing of them before I go ahead and make it. But anyway, that was just a little intro part. That's really not what this uh, class is about. So what this is about, and scary as it is, um, it's about making this card. So let me scroll back out, or the card, um, the front of it, like I have right here, just the front, the black, the dark black piece that I have here. So. Uh, I got a tip, one of the tips I learned because I do want this to cut out and let's say we just wanted this pumpkin to be like this. And after we did it, we wanted it to cut out so I could pop it up on a card or anything else. And I want, I made an offset of it. Um, what was my point? Oh, oh yes. If I wanted to have it cut out too, I need to have this down towards the bottom because if you, at least in my silhouette, we're going to find out for sure in the cricket, I guess, and I am going to put it in the bottom. I'm not positive, but here's the thing. Let's say I have it do this first and it does the um, foiling, right? And then it's going to stop, but it's going to stop right here on top of all this. The machine is, and it's not going to go back to the beginning unless I have my machine set up a certain way and then it will, but it's usually not going to go back to the beginning. And so I need this to be down here. Well, it will go back. To, I'm sorry, hold on a minute. It is going to go back to the top, but if I had this up at the top, 
I still wouldn't be able to get at the foil to remove it so that I can then cut, okay? So it is going to go back to the top. It's just, I need it to go to the top and my design be at the bottom so I can remove the foil before I want it to cut. Does that make sense, I hope? Anybody questioning what in the world? Oh, you can't see the card. Oh, 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 sorry. You mean this card that I showed a little bit ago? Let's see, I'll stay here for just a second. I'm like 20 seconds behind you guys, what I actually see on my screen. So I'm going to wait here to see if you can see it for a second, and then there'll be a lag. Okay, there it is. So that's the card that I'm making. All right. So again, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to make sure that these are both down here at the bottom. And actually, I'm going to group these two things together. And I'm going to come up here to the top where the bullseye is. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to use this alignment tool and align them center like that so they look good to me. And I'm going to bring the base of the card down here as well. And I'm going to put it way down here in the lower left-hand corner. At first, Tammy and I were saying, or I was saying to Tammy, I think I need to put it one inch in and one inch up. But I think as long as I put it in the lower left-hand corner, I'll be okay. So now I'm going to right-click and send that little orange piece to the back so that I can more easily move these things because I want them, oops. Well, maybe, there we go. And I could actually hit the center button and center these in here, but I can pretty much do it by eyeball like that. And now I'm getting nervous about what I'm gonna do next. All right, so that's ready to go. And like I said, I'm going to show you on the Cameo first, and then we're going to, I'm going to take this over to Cricut Design Space, and we're going to do it there. I do need to tell you guys, if you are working in Silhouette and you're taking it to Cricut Design Space, make sure before you take it that you get all of these together and you come up to Object and make it a compound path. And then I can get rid of that color again up here. If you don't do that, all of your little tiny pieces are going to come in as wee little teeny weeny pieces over there, a million little cut files. And that's really going to mess up your Cricut design space. So as long as you come up to object and make it a compound path, that makes it like it's one total object, just one thing. Okay. So now we're ready to go ahead and make it here in silhouette. So all I have to do is go to send. And it's already exactly where I need it to be. And I actually am lucky because this time it's pretty much showing up the way I want it to show up most of the way. All right, let's see. So the orange here is the card. I'm going to undo that right now. And this right here, which I have registered in tool number two, for those of you who have a Cameo, this is tool number one. And in tool number one, I have my cutter. This is tool number two. And in that tool, I have my quill pen. Okay, so I need, I'm need. i gonna do cardstock plain. It doesn't really matter. And I have it set to sketch, which is perfect. That's exactly what I want. This one, I'll come back and do this one afterwards. I don't want it to sketch. I'm going to change it to cut and the ratchet blade. And it is cardstock, so I'll leave it on that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to, oh, um, whoa, if I can get out of my chair, push it out. I'm going to go over to my silhouette and get started with that. I'll show you, I'll turn on my phone. I'm kind of bummed that you can't see my desktop because I want to show you how I um, tape everything on here. Let me double check one more time. Let's see. New share. Yeah, I'm not sure what that's all about. So, and it looks like I have to turn my phone off and back on again. So hang on just a second, it must have stopped. Let's 
So I'm having to turn on screen and mirror ring. Get you guys back to this. Okay, so what I can kind of show you here is that I do have my A connector in here and I do have one of the um, quills. I have already done this one. I've already taped the foil onto here with washi tape and it's ready to be sent in. Notice that I have it taped on the lower left-hand side as I said I need it to be. So, I've been heating this up for a while now. You only have to heat it for five minutes. And I'm gonna take out this little piece right here that is supposedly the heat protector, protector, but it doesn't ever even feel warm to me. So I don't know, you know, that must just be a extra precaution. I'll put it here so I don't lose it. So I'm gonna load this in. And I need to come back over to my um, computer and say send. Now let's make sure. I like to double check when I'm over here. So tool number two has my uh, quill in it. That's what I have. It's cardstock sketch and that's the only one checked. So I should be good to go. So here we go. I'm going to send it and it should go way down here and start working. And that's going to take a few more minutes, obviously. Um, not very long, though, believe it or not. But while that's doing that, what I think I will do is I'll go ahead and start taping what I need on the Cricut mat. I might as well wait a minute. It's going to be done. I think. <laughs> my cricket mat that I'm ready to put the foil on. Actually, I can show you right here. There's the foil I'm going to put on the bottom. And I like to use my, oh, I like to use a rotary cutter. You probably won't be able to hear me over there. I better wait. Yes, y'all saw the one I did yesterday. It was so involved and intricate and it really didn't take that long. I mean, this seems like it's taking as long <laughs> and maybe it's just because I'm standing here waiting for it. But the one I made yesterday, I thought I brought it down here. I don't see it. It was gorgeous. Look online if you haven't seen it, it's so pretty. 
And that was just a design I found on Pixabay that I was able to make into an SVG. And then I changed it so that it would draw rather than cut or sketch. Thank you. Oh, it was just one that I had shown yesterday that was in our Facebook group. I think I may have put it even to all three of them. It was the little round or kind of egg-shaped um, ornament. And this is taking way longer than I expected, you guys. Sorry. And if my other camera was working, I could be doing something else. Goodness. Oh, okay. Have you, oh, then, then she should join because have you um, signed up for the newsletter on my um, website? Because sometimes I send out the pictures there. Yes, I'm on Facebook and pretty much I don't do anything with my family or people I really know. I usually just use it for crafting stuff. I do have a private page I put a few things on, but hardly ever. Yay. Okay. Can you see, or you will see, how it's my machine has moved back up to the top, and now I'm able to take off the foil, because the next thing I want it to do is I want it to cut. So just take this washi tape off. And you don't have to be really careful because this foil is pretty much done. Okay, turned out beautifully. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over here to my silhouette. And you'll be able to see that, I think, in a moment. And once I'm here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncheck the top one that I just did, uncheck that. And then I'm going to check the orange because that's just going to uh, cut out the box. So now I'm ready to send this again because my Cameo 3 says it's ready. I'm just going to say send. And what that's doing now is it's just sending it right back. And I'm gonna to have to turn on my phone every time, Don. Okay, it's gonna come out now. Oops. All right, let's check it out and see how it turned out. This is the best you're going to be able to see is on this little camera here. But you can see how nicely that turned out. Hopefully. So I'm waiting for my screen to catch up so I can make sure that you're seeing it. It turned out really pretty. And so just like on this one, what I did was I mounted this blue on top of some white just to give it an extra little border, or the black, I'm sorry, the black on top of some white, and then I added it onto the black cardstock. I know, Carmen, I couldn't wait either. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and go to Cricut Design Space, and so I'm going to share... New share, Cricut Design Space and share. 
Okay, so we're over at Cricut Design Space. And while you're getting up to speed with me, I've got to start my phone again so I can show you that. I don't know why screen mirroring gets cut off. Well, I'll wait until I'm getting ready to go over there. Okay. So anyway, here we are in Cricut Design Space. And um, you can see I've already brought it in here. And I'm going to show you something. I brought it in two different ways. This first one that you see right here, the second one in from the left, that's the one that's not right. That's the one that I didn't, uh, what is it, make a compound path. So I want you to see how that's going to come in if I insert it. Let's wait, let's make a new one just in case. Replace. Okay, now I'm going to upload. I'm going to upload this one that was the goof into here and you're going to see what it looks like. Oh, me? Okay. <laughs> Settings and display. Did you say settings and display? And click time. Oh, thank you. I thought maybe since I was using it, that wouldn't work, that wouldn't happen. Thanks, Tammy. Okay, so here's the way it came in. If you look over here in my screen in Cricut Design Space, okay, it looks pretty good, right? I mean, the, this word looks kind of weird, but I'll show you that in a second. But what I want you to know, this is over here on the left-hand side. Look at this thing. Look at the layers panel. Every single one of those were little cut pieces, and that's surely not at all what we want. Look at them all. I mean, there's a ton of them. You don't want that. So let me delete this one and show you the way it will look if you remember to um, make it a compound path. Now I did separate them so one wasn't on top of the other, but you'll still see the difference in just a sec. So let me insert this one and let me make it bigger. And uh, I can, um, can ungroup it. Okay, let's look over here at the layers panel now. Do you see a million zillion little cuts over here? No, there are just two things. There's this thing that we made a compound path and it made it one thing. And then there's this, that's one. Oh, I shouldn't have resized them, what am I doing? Z, Z. Oh, heavens the Murgatroyd, sometimes I just don't think. Okay, there we go. All right, so here they are together again. Now, like I said, you might be thinking, well, that thankful, that looks kind of weird. That doesn't look like what it was supposed to look like. And let me zoom in by this thing down here in the lower left-hand corner so you can see. Well, let's look over in the layers panel for a minute on this and look what it says it is, a cut file. Okay, we don't want it to be a cut file. We want this to sketch or draw or whatever they call it in Cricut Design Space or whatever they call it in Scan and Cut. So we're gonna come up here to where it says line type up in the left-hand corner up here. I'm gonna change it from cut to draw. And when I do that, look and see what happens to the word thankful. Voila, voila. Perfect, just what we wanted. So now we're ready to go. So this is ready and this is ready. So I'm gonna go make it. And I'm going to do the same thing I had done before. I think it might be pretty easy for Cricut because I just dragged this down to the bottom as far as it would go and to the left as far as it would go. And I'm hoping that's going to work just perfectly. Now, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see me put my foil on here very well. I mean, I could put this down here for you, but you're not going to be able to see very well, I'm sure. But... I did want to show you that I do prefer using a rotary cutter to cut my foil. It makes it a lot easier, I think. So what I do is I take my little tiny roll and I roll some of it out. Then I just take my mouse and stick it on top of it. And I look in Cricut Design Space to see about how big this has to be. And it looks like it's like one, two, three. I'm going to make it four inches. It's going to be an over kill but I'd rather do that and actually I, I'm sometimes trying to be so frugal I was telling Tammy this the other day I try to be so frugal 
that I end up messing up things because there was not just a smidge and not enough of something. So it ruined the project. And so by the time I do that two or three times, I might as well have just cut a little extra to begin with and not wasted three other ones that I tried. So anyway, that's what I, that's my philosophy now. So again, I'm noticing this is like one, two, three, I'll say four inches, and that's going to be way bigger than I need. I'm just going to use this and then just use a rotary cutter. For me, it's easier on my mat right here. I guess you guys can see a little bit. There we go. And that's just cut off. Move my ruler and my extra little roll out of the way. And then, oh, and while I'm doing this, what I should be doing is warming up my uh, stylus over here, or whatever it's called. But the thing is, I wanted to show you how to put it in. So let me do this again. Tammy, I'm glad you told me about this little trick. So I need to do this again. Screen mirroring. And I need to go up here to share it. And iPhone or iPad. All right, here we go. And the bummer of this is if with this program, you can't put the phone sideways, which would be so much better. So you wouldn't have that little skinny thing in the center. But that's the best I can do for right now. Maybe eventually I'll figure something better. All right. Here we are. Hopefully, let's see what you can see. Yeah, okay. All right, so this is the thing that you need to remove. This is the pen holder. Notice it has these little nubby things here. They're kind of hard to get out, but you notice you just pinch them together and they go in. So when it's down in your machine and you open this, you have to get under here with two fingers and kind of push those together so that you can pop this thing out. Take you a few minutes to do it and you're like, I can't but you'll be able to do it and it won't hurt a thing. So once this is out, of course, take good care of it. Don't lose it. And then you're going to get your number C or letter C adapter that screws right on. And hang on just a second. I'm gonna unplug that other one so it doesn't keep staying heated. There we go. Okay. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place this down in here. Something seems weird. There we go, I think. Okay, there we go. Okay, I don't know what just happened here. Something was odd. But I'd like to put my cord back behind here and then down here to my extension cord. A lot of cords going on over here. <laughs> All right, and watch that little light on top of that thing. It's going to turn on. So I'm just using a phone charger. Okay, so that's heating up and it has to heat for five minutes. So usually, because I have a hard time paying attention, I just tell Siri, hey Siri, set timer for five minutes. Okay, she's going to set it maybe. Your timer is set for five minutes. Thank you. All right, so now while that's set, and so huh, I'm afraid to go back over to this camera, so I'll just do this. There you go. You can see a little bit. All right, so now what I'm doing is I'm just taping this on here. So I'm going to move this screen out of my way for a second if I can. All right, so I wanna just put it like this. And again, this is way overkill for as much as I need. And you get this tape in your kit. And I've read recently, at first I was putting it all around all four edges, but I read recently where they said, you know, you can just put it on the corners and that would work. So if you're brave, you're not afraid, you can just put it on the corners. 
when I first start learning how to do things, I usually follow the directions exactly what they say because I'm scared. Then I start getting brave. So I'm just taping this on and I think I'll just actually just rip that off the corner there. All right. And I think what I really, <coughs> sorry, should have done was uh, did one side and then the other so you can kind of stretch it across. But I've, I was really worried about that because I saw other people doing things online and I thought, oh, it there doesn't look very taut. And they keep telling me you're supposed to put it on there very taut. And so, oh, I do need, I guess I should put that heat thing under there. Thanks, Barbara. Like I said, I don't know if it's getting hot or not, but it hasn't on the silhouette. But like I said, I've not tried the Cricut yet. So maybe it does get close enough to that to get hot. So... So I'm making this kind of taut, but if you look at it, look at that, that's not very taut. And you probably can't see it that well from the little tiny screen. But anyway, so there it is, it's on there. And I'm so now what I'm doing is I'm waiting for my timer and let's go back up again to Cricut. Oh, I'm afraid to go, I'm afraid we'll lose our camera again. So let me just go myself and I'm just going to go to continue. Oh, it says no device is found. That's because it's not on. <laughs> I was like, please don't do that to me right now. Still says no device found, you guys. Please continue to. Hmm. Maybe I better uh, just cancel this thing and then come back in. So I'll be right back with you. you sure you want to cancel? Yes. And maybe if I open Cricut Design Space again. <clears throat> So I'm still trying. Yeah, yours was never warm either, huh, Tammy? Okay. <clears throat> Which is weird. I guess it's just an extra precaution that they're doing. So I'm restarting. And I have the desktop version. So maybe I should go online if this won't work. Upload. Upload your image. Insert. <sighs> Make it. All right, maybe now it's going to work. Let's see. Continue. No. Son of a gun, you guys. My device is not being found. And it's probably because I have all these things connected to this thing. Hmm. Settings. Let me go to the, let me go to my Bluetooth real quick and see if I can do anything right there. Add a device. Okay, the timer just went off. My thing is heated, but I cannot find... I am, yeah, that's what I did. <clears throat> so I have th three or four different things connected via Bluetooth. <gasps> Wait, I think I found it. I'm going to turn it off and turn it back on.
Hmm. Okay, who knows what to do because right now it says that my Bluetooth for my Cricut Air is turned off. I did turn that off already. I don't know if I have to turn off mirroring, do you think? Should I turn that off once and see? Let me try one more thing. Let me go online to the online one and see if by any chance that one works. Let me delete this, discard all, discard all. Um, I'm going to Cricut Design Space just to see if that works by any chance. Again. <clears throat> okay, new project. Okay, let's try. Make it. Okay, bring this down here. And if this doesn't work, I don't know. No device found. You don't have to stop me or anything. Okay. <clears throat> well, my it's not finding my machine. And I really don't know why. <sighs> so I guess I'm not going to be able to show you it cutting this, <laughs> unfortunately. But I'll tell you what I will do is I will uh, set, uh, what shall I do? Because I was going to say I'll put it in Facebook, but Carmen, you won't see it in Facebook. I was going to say I could show you how it ends up or I could take a small video of it and post that. I don't know what to say. Let me check one more time on my Bluetooth settings. I know how to do a lot of stuff with software. I'm not savvy with the hardware of things and that's why I'm a little bit stumped. I like software, put it on the blog. Oh, there you go, good idea. Tammy, you're so smart. Thank you. Make sure the plug didn't fall out of the cricket. But you know what, it's still lit up, it's still on. So that didn't fall out, right? Let's see. Let me try one more. Let me try to go back to my settings one more time. Settings. So, you know, since this didn't work, I didn't have to stress all over it. <laughs> I'll turn Bluetooth off and then back on. Is that what you said? I'll try that once too. Nope. Hmm. I mean, my scanner works, or my printer works with Bluetooth. Your device is either turned off or already connected to another browser or tab. Would you like to reset it? Yes. And maybe it's going to try to do it here on my, maybe it's going to try to do it here on, nope. All right, well, how about your USB on the Cricut? I don't know if it'll go that far. Let's see, where is that plug? Let me try that. Yeah, it might work. Let me go get it over here. And just hardwire it into my computer, you're saying, right? Let me unplug this. Plug in this. And that's so many wires if y'all could see what's going on in my house right here. <laughs> okay. 
there's that. Now, so select a Cricut device. Okay. <sighs> it may be going to work now. Hard stock. Okay. Oh, but you know what I got to do? Since I did do this, I have to cancel because I have to go back. Are you sure you want to cancel it? Yes. I have to go back and I have to change that because when I reopened it, that black file says it's cutting again. I need to change it again. So the line type is not cut, but it's draw. And now I can make it and continue and keep your fingers crossed. Okay, set the material. Okay, okay. And take this out and hopefully there's enough room and not enough, not too many wires back here. So this can work. Try to save my tripods in the way now. <laughs> oh, okay, here we go. Load it. I can. There we go. Okay. So far, so good. What can you see? Can you see this? Okay, here we go. Press go. I'm scared. This is my first time. <laughs> Hey, 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 what are you doing? Stop. Pause. Why are you doing something? Duh, didn't move it down. Cancel. Y'all, see, this is what happens. Cancel the cut. So what I didn't do, who knows what I did not do? You probably don't. You didn't see it. Oh. All right, I'm gonna cancel this whole thing. Leave, do this. All right, so I'm gonna go try one more time. You know what I didn't do, you guys? I did not move the picture down to the bottom. So many little things you gotta remember. So I don't want it to be a cut. And so I need that black thing uh, to be a draw. So let me change that one more time. And I know you can't see any of this. Changing it to a draw. And I'm going to make it. And I've got to drag it down to the bottom this time. I don't want it to do it up there on my mat where there's nothing. All right. So now I'm going to continue. And this may go a little faster than my first one because I made this smaller. Okay. It's trying to connect again. Here's the thing. Uh, I've confused my cricket, so I need to do one more thing now. <laughs> I bet you guys are about to die. Uh, let's see. Cricket Design Space. I'm going on to it one more time online instead of the one that I downloaded. New project. Uh, one step, no, maybe later I'll do that. I've already done it. It's on my computer. Upload, upload the image, insert. I'm going to remember to do all those things now. Ungroup. Uh, resize it a little bit. Maybe a little bit more. All right. And now what I want to do is change the black from cut to draw and then go to make it. 
and drag the darn thing down to the bottom this time and then say continue. And this should be it, you guys, it should go. It's trying to connect. <laughs> okay, just ask me if I want to reset the connection. And I said, yes. So what's it doing now? Just pip popped it back out. Select my Cricut device. You got plenty of time, Barbara. Okay, here we go. Splashing, I can load my mat. Okay, I'm ready. Let's continue, press go and it's in the right place. Okay, here we go. Everybody have your fingers crossed. Come on, baby. All right, so it's going slowly. But what it's doing right now, of course, is making all the little lines probably in the text. In that text, which you can see this is thankful. Looks like it's working beautifully. And I'll tell you what though, you guys, if you do get one of these, or if you have one, um, when you're watching it work, it looks like it's really a big mess, like it is not gonna work. That foil starts to look all junky and jumbly. And you think, oh, what a mess. But then, yay, it works. There really are a few things to remember, but you know what? I probably, if I wasn't on here, I'd be better, like not worrying about what camera's working and what one isn't. All I needed to remember for this was to change it from cut to draw and to move it down to the bottom of my mat. That's all. But since I kept trying to get um, connected, and which camera's sort of working. So it's really not too hard. <laughs> oh, you can see this. There's that. Okay, she's going. And again, like I've been told, you know, don't worry about your um, warranty. That's just like sticking a pen in the holder as long as you don't plug your heater thing into your um, cricket machine does a foil tear no it does not let me make sure it's not tearing on my cricket nope it is not tearing Oh, okay, so a lot of people have problem using the Bluetooth on theirs. It's not that big a deal, really, if you have to use the cord, you know, because usually your machine's pretty close to your computer. Okay, this one shouldn't take as long. I don't know, maybe you guys have seen enough after I show you this part. If you do separate ones for Silhouette users and Cricut users, yes. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a good idea. It's just I find I'm using the Silhouette software so much more than Cricut anything. And I think the Cricut people are getting unhappy with me because they don't want to buy the Silhouette software. They don't want to have anything to do with it. And so you've been probably noticing I get thumbs down on my videos. And I think that's why people are just mad at me. <laughs> because they just want cricket, period. But they don't understand that if you have the business edition, it's so much easier to use your cricket machine with Silhouette software. I guess that just bothers them. Yet, that, you know, people seem like they'll spend the money to get one of those little mini irons, but yet they won't spend the $50 a one-time fee to get the software that's going to make them be able to do so much more. Oh, yes. The reason why you move the 
image to the bottom of the mat is because when it's done foiling, I want to be able to take the foil off before the cutter cuts. Now, if you're not going to cut something, you're just going to cut it by hand, you're fine. See how my mat came all the way out now. And so now what I can do is I can take this foil off. And let's peek. Oh, it worked. Pretty good. Tiny little bit of an issue I see. Could be user error. Okay. But now, see what I would do next is I will go to the second thing. And I'm going to cut this. And huh, why does it say dismiss it? Okay, I'm not really sure. Oh, there we go. Okay. Nope. Okay, what I was trying to get it to do now was to uh, to cut, and I'm not exactly sure why it didn't go on to cut then. But anyway, move the roller, white rollers to the right. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, well, that's a smart thing. Let me look and see. Yes, maybe that's what happened because my roller probably did roll over that part, Barbara. So I probably should have moved my rollers. So that might be what had happened because if I'll show you where it is. Let's see, where's my car? Let me just take it out of here now and be done. Let's see. So hopefully you can see, let's see that. I don't know if you can see that very well, but it did do really, really well everywhere except for on this side over here. And maybe that is where the roller was rolling on the foil because that's right over here. And that's what have been about where that is. So maybe that's true. Now these rollers, if you can't move both of these rollers, I don't know if you can hear me. If you can't move both of these, then what you could do is just move your whole project over a little bit, put your foil here and just make sure that there aren't any rollers in your way there. The only other thing is this wire right here is really, really tight. So it may not have been able to move. And the reason why it's really tight is because I have a pile of stuff that's hooked up to it. that's adding weight because I have these, both these machines over here. But anyway, the point is it works. It's easy and it's fun. And the stuff turns out beautifully. I just think it's my setup here that caused a little bit of problem. But again, you can see that these turn out really beautifully. So, okay, let's see how much faster I can create designs with the business. It's amazing. It is amazing. I love it. And I'm so sad when people won't do it because there's still people that are trying to add offsets. I watched a video today of someone showing, I think her name is Clever Someday, showing how to do an offset on an image in Cricut Design Space. And it was just so difficult. And you know, all we have to do is just click a button and there it is. The, not only that, but the uh, what else do we have? Let's look up here for just one second and I'll be quiet because y'all probably are about ready to just get on out of hell, as they would say here. So here we are back in Cricut Design Space. I really don't want to be there. I want to be in Silhouette, which I shut down. All right, so new share. All right, so here we are in Silhouette Studio. So the point is, I'm hoping you can see this. I believe I'm sharing the right screen, yes. So what we can do here is so much more that we can do for our Cricut machine. There's not only the trace that we can make our own SVGs. There's the, the replicate panel that you can do all kind of cool stuff with. How about all these little, these little shapes over here? You remember how we can do all these little shapes over here and just change them up the way they look and duplicate them. And, and then we have the, um, the offset tool 
want to offset this. Just hit the offset and there we go. Want to do it twice. There you go. What else we got? We got uh, rhinestones and we have the sh now a new one today that y'all don't know about. If you join me on Saturdays, is this one? Can't imagine. Okay. Yeah. This one over here, the sketch tool. We just learned about this. Check it out. I'm going to click on this, hit this. Look what that just did. Can you guys see that? And you could have a line. I mean, you could have a pen that would draw this stuff. I played with this for a while. Or you could do it with your uh, embossing tool or your uh, whatever these things are called, the quill foil quill. But they're like, look, I can change all of these and I can change the spacing. I can change the angle. I could change this. Oh, I like this one too. It looks like it goes like a spiral. And these are just all these things that we can do that they, they can't do. And this will work with our Cricut machines. What else we got? The rhinestones, obviously. I could rhine, I could stone the outside of this, as they say. I'll stone it. So just click on it. And I'm going to do the outer border and rhinestones just like that. I could change their color, make them pretty. Boom. Boom. There we go. Okay, they got messed up a little bit when I did that. But we know how to move those. All we have to do is say release rhinestones and we can move them around however we want. So anyway, there's just a lot we can do. It's just, uh, it just amazes me that people just don't want to do it. Although, you know what, you know, a lot of times people, money is tight and I understand that. But if they have the money to spend on these other things, they're really missing out by not getting this software to use for their Cricut machines until Cricut ups their game with theirs. Who knows? Maybe they'll do that. But until then, this is so worth 50 50 or $60, whatever it is. And I, like I said, when I first bought mine, I spent $99 for it because I didn't know that Swing Design had it. So anyway. All right. Does anybody else have any questions? I could talk to myself, it seems like all day. The Cricut Design Space was difficult too. If y'all watch Melody Lane, how many times has she gone over how to do slicing in Cricut Design Space? Because people, you know, have to keep refreshing their memories on how to do it. Or what else does she do? Oftentimes she does slicing, um, welding. So a lot of the things are the same here. There's just more. So that's probably why you think there's a little bit of a learning curve. But actually, I've got the five free classes on my website right now that'll walk you through it. We have the Saturday morning classes. So anyway, and contour, right, contour. Speaking of contour, that's what that lady was using today. Somehow the contour function to help her with adding a, uh, an offset to something. Yes, I was scared to death of design space at first. You're welcome, Chow. I'm glad to see you again. I hope I answered any questions you might have had. <laughs> Designer edition, yeah. Yeah, make sure you go to Swing Design to get it because they have the cheapest way to upgrade or uh, update. However, the only thing is, Joanne, do you have the, um, do you have a Cricut machine or do you use a Cameo? If you have a Cameo, as long as you have Designer Edition, you should be fine. Those of us who have Cricut machines, we have to have the Business Edition because that's the only way we can save the files as SVGs that Cricut will read for us. Oh, you got both. Okay. Well, it's only about 16 bucks to go from Designer. Yeah. Yeah, and then you can use it for both. Carmen, weren't you scared of design space at first? <laughs> I was. And now it's just like, well, since I've been using this software so much, you saw me when I went over there. I was like, uh -oh, uh oh, I'm not sure what to do right here. Because if you don't work with these things, you don't remember it. Thanks, Barbara. 
oh, you're welcome. I'm a ham, you know, like I said, I was a teacher. You can't quite get rid of me. <laughs> so, and it helps me to keep learning also. Stretches my brain. You know, you all were saying, or Tammy was saying, I can't wait to get up in the morning and get in the craft room. And she knows that even before I get up in the morning and get into the craft room, I'm watching videos and I'm researching things because I just love it. It's just fun. Yeah, me too, Carmen. I watched a lot. The very first one I watched was Auntie Tay, getting your thing out of the box. <laughs> yes, me too. Barbara, I think you and I are the same age, actually. Or maybe I'm older. I don't know. But I thought maybe we were the same. Oh, no, not Barbara. No, no. I mean, Carmen, I think. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> Okay, there's my brain. Hey, don't crick it. I don't have access. I had access for, and I actually still do have it because of the people that are trying to learn some of those things. So I make sure that I keep it. Yeah. Oh, Barbara, I'm older. Okay. <laughs> I beat you. You're a spring chicken. Okay, me too. But Auntie Tay was too advanced for me. Melody Lane helped me. Now, Carmen, I'm older than you too. Holy moly, you guys. <laughs> oh, well. Anyway. Yeah, Auntie Tay, I'm not sure. I just liked her unboxing. Because when I bought mine, I, oh, wow, we're all right up there together. When I bought mine, I was um, out visiting my daughter and she was pregnant at the time. And I bought one for me and I bought one for her. I just bought hers there and I had mine shipped or I bought mine when I got back home, but we both got the same thing. So we kind of watched it out there together to try to figure out how to get this out of the box. And it was so scary. Oh, but yeah, no, I'm not much younger. Thank you though. Um, yeah, I was even afraid to use this tool right here. It took, I told Tammy, I was like, okay, I just got to be bold and go ahead and use it. So, yeah, I am going to have a video on Auntie Tay, though. I think I told y'all it's going to go live on the 24th. I'm supposed to be getting her glitter in the mail to use so I can say that it's her glitter. And I'm going to do that little cake topper with for Halloween. So. She's a nice person, though, you know. Do you know anything about her? She's a really person, really cool person. 35 plus shipping and handling, 59. What's that? What? What's, sh what's shipping and handling? There shouldn't be any shipping and handling if you're talking about this tool. Should be free shipping. Well, at least I had free shipping with Amazon Prime, and I don't think shipping would be that much of it. I don't know where you live, Heather. Oh, yeah. You mean putting the fancy stuff on them? Or do you mean just putting vinyl on them, Carmen? Oh, I didn't know Auntie Tay lived out there. Huh. Okay, Rebecca, bye. Thanks for coming. Oh. So you're 59 or you are 35? <laughs> Barbara. Oh, I thought you were saying by Rebecca. Okay. The glitter. Oh, yeah, the glitter. I've not tried that yet. I know Tammy doesn't like it, <laughs> but I haven't tried any of that. She's talking about on the cups, I think, Tammy. Okay, well, Heather, you're climbing up there. Maybe you're the youngster in the group. Oh, my gosh. I just remembered something. This whole thing is recording. I'm going to have to stop this thing so it will be private, and then I'll delete all this jazz. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I hope this thing's not going to go live like this. Do you know how many thumbs down I'll get about that? <laughs> Oh, well. The funny thing, though, is about the thumbs down people is they must be subscribed because as soon as you put a video up live, 
they give you a thumbs down. So the only way they could have known that you just put a video up like 10 seconds ago is because they're subscribed. And it really doesn't bother me. My husband thinks it does, but it really doesn't. It's like, don't worry about it. It's like, I'm not. Anyway. Want to try but scare of the, oh, are you? Yeah. The fumes. You might not want all that junk around your little boy. But maybe you do it outside. Yeah, heaters. Isn't that epoxy really stinky? Yeah, right. Oh, you've made those cups. Okay. I haven't made any. Oh, yes. Thank you. I did, Barbara, but thank you very much because I needed all the help I can get. <laughs> yes. Oh, is that right? Well, there you go then. I get a few, so good. Oh, yeah. Child, my daughter has twins that will be three in November and she can't do anything. And when they're not, when they are asleep taking a nap, she's so exhausted from chasing them around and stuff that she, she can't do anything anymore. Just survive. Okay. Okay. I do. Oh, that's right. I remember you saying that. Didn't you say you got really ill from it? Or you can't work or something? I can't remember what you had said. He, how, is, how old is Kyle? How old is he? Oh, he's four and a half. Okay. <laughs> hey, when my son was up almost that age, I'd say, Aaron, don't you want to go to the bathroom? And he'd tell me, no, he liked to poop in his pants. How kooky was that? Bye, Barbara. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Okay, that's what it was. I knew you had something from working there. Yeah, I bet. Maybe he thinks he's too busy and doesn't want to slow down. My daughter was really easy. She toilet trained herself when she was really young, but my son, no way. Oh, 
Oh no. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Right, I agree, boys are difficult. He's busy. See, I told you that's what it probably was. He's a busy bee. Okay, bye. I got to go get some lunch too. So see you guys later. Oh, threw some cheers into it. Oh, that's a good idea. No, a little boy might like that. <laughs> yeah, that might be a good game. You're welcome, Tao. See you guys again soon. I guess I should stop this and see if I can make it so it doesn't go, all of this doesn't go live. Just waking up. All right. <laughs> now off to work for a few days. Busy weekend. Oh. Yep. See everybody soon. Now I got to figure out how to end.